I really should go. Oh, what's the hurry? Hurry? Spend more time between the sheets than John and Yoko. Oh, all you need is love. <laughs> and some clean clothes. In case you haven't noticed, I've been wearing the same thing for the past two days. Yeah, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. And I've been meaning to get to my apartment to change. Why don't you take a look in the closet? Maybe you'll find something to wear. Something of your wife's? She took everything with her. Just have a look. See anything you like? These are my clothes. I had them sent over. That was so thoughtful of you. I hate it when you leave here. So I figured, why should you? Why should I? In fact, I don't ever want you out of my sight. I want you with me always. What about Cynthia? She's filed for divorce. My attorney says if I agree to her terms, it could be final in two months. That soon? Not soon enough. Teddy, I don't want you to be my mistress. I want you to be my wife. Will you marry me? I feel like I'm living the life of Dr. Riley. My next appointment's not for two hours. Oh, yeah. Must be quite a change from the clinic. Yeah, well, down there, lunch break usually means someone with a broken arm. Thank you. I bet the money isn't bad either. Well, I can finally start paying off some of my student loans. I hope you're also being good to yourself. You deserve it. That's it. Oh. Two cheese steaks, order large fries, barbecue chicken platter, lemon meringue pie. Who's all this for? A sick friend. Fortunately, their appetite hasn't been affected. Your doll to pick up the check. Alex, guess what? What? I got a job. Oh, Norma, that's great. I've been looking for weeks, and wow, finally, it found me. Who's it with? The public television station. WBEG? Mm -hmm. I'm producing this year's Pledge-a-thon. If it's a success, it could mean a permanent position. Those pledge drives drive me nuts. The way they stop with their showing every five seconds to beg you for money. It took Vladimir Horowitz two hours to finish the minute waltz. It's annoying, but it's the only way they can stay on the air. So, we're looking for volunteers. Uh, you know, that reminds me. I I'm late for my next appointment. I've got a sick friend. Uh, hey. What are you looking at me for? They haven't said a host yet, but I'm sure if I tell them you're available... Uh, 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 no, I've had more than my fill of the media lately. And my hosting days are over. Come on, Barker. Don't you miss it? Lights, cameras, commercials. No. Not even you could talk me into making a comeback. It's not a comeback. It's a return. And besides, it's not for me. It's for public television. Think of all those wonderful shows they put on. Centerpiece Theater, Poppy Seat Street, Mr. Dodger's Neighborhood. I'll send them a check. Won't you man the phones for a couple of hours? Just for moral support.
So what'd you tell him? I told him yes. As in? Y-E-S. Now let me get this straight. You agreed to marry the man who killed your husband. I told you. Yeah, you'll do whatever it takes, I know, but I didn't realize that included walking down the aisle. You don't have to worry, Lucky. Before you can say I do, Albright will be wearing a ball and chain. Mm. As your husband? No, it's a jailbird. Now that I'm living in the house, I can snoop around and find what I need to take to the police. Do you have any idea what you're looking for? No. Wonderful. But before his wife left, she gave me the key to his study, and she said that's where he keeps all of his important papers. I think that you should get out of this right now. Ooh, this lemon meringue pie looks really good. Uh, did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? I made a promise to Falconer, and I'm not going to break it. I have to get back at these. I'm having lunch with my sisters. Yeah, I have a very uh, busy schedule myself. Let me see here. <clears throat> There's uh, Jeopardy at three, followed by The Price is Right, then The Wheel of Fortune. So far, I have won a trip to Hawaii, a washer and dryer, and a Camaro convertible. Mm -mm. Too bad you're dead. You make a hell of a contestant. Teddy, one more thing. Yeah. <sighs> Be careful. On behalf of myself and the entire staff here at Lakeview Medical Associates, welcome to our nightmare. Shelly Nussbaum. Mm -hmm. My God, she's here all the time. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I've heard you and the other doctors talking about this woman. She's the one there's never anything wrong with, the one you all call Mrs. Nudge. Uh, Howard. Uh, she has, uh, <coughs> occasionally and, uh, irreverently been referred to by that nickname, yes? Why are you dumping her on me? She's been through everybody else. It's your turn. How about we encourage her to take up another hobby besides wasting our time? Uh, if Mrs. Nussbaum wants to come in here and pay 80 bucks a pop to hear that she's going to outlive us all, then what's the harm? Besides, she's not all that bad. Excuse me? Anybody home? Mrs. N Mrs. Nussbaum. Dr. Weber, did you know there is a severe draft in the waiting room? I didn't, but I'll look into it. Right, right away. Yes, ma'am. This her? Uh, this is Dr. Bennett, and she will be your primary physician from now on. That's your natural color? Uh, yes. No, actually, um, I highlight it. Good, because normally I don't trust redheads. What am I going to do now? I've got a pledge drive and no driver. Norma, I know what you're going to ask, but uh, I absolutely... Excuse me, Norma, but uh, Alex has made her position clear. She's chosen to withdraw from the public eye. Alex, do it, and I will put you in my will. Hello? Three. It's for you. Two. Welcome to WBEG's annual pledge-a-thon. I'm your host, Alex Barker. Money was wired to your account at the Banco de Mexico today company plane is ready to go. We'll leave Thursday morning. Have the pilot file the flight manifest. Two passengers. I'm going with you? No. It'll just be Teddy and me. I see. Does she know the purpose of the trip? I haven't had a chance to tell her yet. Well, maybe you shouldn't. I don't trust her. <laughs> you don't trust anybody. That's why you're good at your job. I suspect you feel the same. What's that supposed to mean? Why haven't you told her about Cosano? Come here, Martin. I think you should know something. I've asked Teddy to marry me. And she's accepted. Well, what do you have to say about that? Congratulations. So, this is the inner sanctum. It's more like a hobby shop. Am I interrupting something? No, not really. I was just telling Martin our good news. Let me be the first to offer my best wishes, Miss Reed. Thank you, Martin. I want to throw an engagement party for us tonight. 
Black tie, champagne, the works. Short notice, isn't it? Oh, Martin's very good at making last minute arrangements, aren't you, Martin? No problem. That's what I like to hear. I'm impressed. Well, you should know when I want something, I get it. Patient Liz Nussbaum Shirley appears to be in perfect health. Complaining of hot flashes, cold flashes, gums tender when she flosses, annoyed that the price of postage has gone up. Diagnosis. Diagnosis? Big pain in the ass. Hey, Wes. Hey. The birds become you. You look great. You too. Uh, you're right. <laughs> Three hours sleep at night, and I'm fresh as a daisy. Things are busy at the clinic, huh? Uh, just because you left, people don't stop getting sick. Ah, good. Now that I've laid some guilt on you, I can hit you up for a favor. Name it. You remember Pedro Valdez? Yeah, how's he doing? Not so hot. His uh, kidneys are failing. I thought we got that in time. Uh, not only that, uh, his family still doesn't have any coverage. Well, weren't you trying to get them some? Oh, I still am. In the meantime, I remember that you have Big, shiny dialysis machine oh, up here in fancy okay. land. That would be completely against policy. Oh, come on, come on. Don't tell me you've changed oh, that goodness. much. <sighs> Look, if you don't help him, he's going to die. Yeah, hi, Barbara. It's Dr. Bennett. Yes, doctor. Is anybody scheduled for dialysis today? Wasn't that thrilling? The brilliant Yo-Yo Duncan playing the first three bars of Shostovsky's Violin Concerto. We'll get to hear more, but first, let's check our tote board to see how close we are to our goal of $10,000. $79.85. Well, the night's still young. And we have some wonderful surprises in store, don't we, Norma? Uh, we certainly do. Nit Gangreen is in the studio. Nit Gangreen? The Speaker of the House of Representatives is here? He's in town making a speech, and he heard we were doing a pledge drive, so he would like to say a few words. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, which of you is the host of this begathon? Alex Barker, Mr. Speaker. It's a which pleasure camera? to... This is your speaker, Nett Gangreen. As you know, this country is in a financial pickle. And it's up to me and my party to bail it out. It's not enough to take away old fogey social security and stop feeding all those school kids. What we've got to do is strike at the real culprit, public television. It's these pansy-ass violin players and opera singers that are driving us straight to the poorhouse. Now, I think we ought to pull the plug on the whole pack of them, pronto. That's the beauty of public television. Where else can the entire spectrum of opinion be heard, no matter how stupid? And now back to Yo-Yo Duncan, playing his pansy-ass violin. Daniel, the door was open. I thought you might be in here. I'm sorry. You don't have anything to be sorry for. You can come in here anytime you want. After all, this will soon be your house. Our house. <laughs> Just promise me you won't hire some decorator who's mad about chintz. Scouts on her. <laughs> but first, you have to tell me, what do you do in here behind closed doors? Promise not to tell? Cross my heart. I put these together. Model airplanes? It's a very relaxing hobby. This looks like the one you took me up in. It's an exact replica. And if you're a very good girl, you can fly in at the end soon. We're going on a trip? Huh? Business or pleasure? Both. Where to? Oh, it's a surprise. Oh, come on. Give me a hint so I know what to take. A bikini should cover it. That's all. Oh, on second thought, it's a private beach. Just bring a toothbrush. 
Must get pretty hot there. It's about to get hotter. I've got some details to work out with Martin. He won't be coming, will he? No. Oh, good. I have a feeling he doesn't like me very much. He doesn't. In fact, he'd be very upset to know that you were in here. Why is that? He doesn't think that you can be trusted. You know what I think? I think he's jealous. And with good reason. His eyes aren't nearly as pretty as yours. This is going to take about three or four hours, but I'm going to be with you the whole time. Okay? No te preocupes, todo va a salir bien. Okay? Push that back. Okay. Comfortable? Okay. This is Well, what do you know? You remember. I thought maybe you'd forgotten me. I've been waiting 20 minutes. Maybe you could read a magazine. Oh, your magazine no, collection no. stinks. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of something right here. It's going to take a little while. Oh, and this is my problem? How? Is there any way that we could reschedule? Oh, oh, is that the way it's going to be from now on? Could you please be a little understanding? Excuse me? I've been a patient here longer than you've been a doctor. And I'm not going to put up with being treated like some second-class citizen. Oh, please. My guess is it's a plane. How can you tell? Because that looks like a wing and that looks like a tail. Could be a chicken. Wing, tail, leg, thigh, breast. Don't you ever think about anything but food? I'm sorry. But when you watch as many commercials as I have recently, you start to hallucinate. Well, how about you just concentrate? OK, all right, all right. We have here. You know. I watched on Nova recently how they customize these planes with uh, fake walls, fake floors, fake fuel tanks to transport drugs. You are a genius. After watching public television for one night, what are you doing? You find a treasure map. Usually the next thing you do is search for the treasure. Hold it. Mm -hmm. If this were a movie, you would most certainly be shouting, call the cops, you idiots. You can shout all you like, but we can't call the cops. Sure, we can. It's easy. Dial 911. Wait, 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 wait. What if I'm wrong? What if he's only taking me to play hide and seek in the sand dunes and I blow my cover? And he'll hire somebody to blow my brains out like he almost did to you. Damn it. I'm be late for my own engagement party. Or funeral. I'm coming with you. Oh, that wouldn't be at all suspicious considering I killed you. Would you stop worrying? I'm going to be fine. I will stop worrying when you're out of this mess. Mm. Mm. You'll be recognized. I got something. Hello, Lucky. You look good for somebody who's dead.
wonder how much coffee Albright had to sell to pay for this house. More than you could drink. Where are you going? To surprise the boss. Around back. Of course. With the servant's entrance. I hear Mike Tyson has a spread like this. You ever see that guy fight? I don't like boxing. Too violent. Well, I saw him take on Michael Spinks in Vegas. They weren't 30 seconds into the first round when, boom, Tyson decks Spinks with this left that seemed to come out of nowhere. <clears throat> Kinda like that. I just pledged my entire week's salary to WBEG, which is why I can't give you anything but love, baby. That's the only thing I've plenty of, baby. Dream a while, scheme a while, we're sure to find happiness. Instead of begging for contributions, why don't we take hostages and demand ransom? Better yet, why don't we play the Star Spangled Banner and go home? Oh, we can't do that. It's a perfect time. Nobody's watching. Thanks, no, we John. made a Thank pledge to much. see this through, and that's what we're going to do. Norma, the cameraman fell asleep right in the middle of my number. Then we wouldn't want to wake him, would we? Wonderful programming that we offer. Well, I guess this is it. <sighs> the end of a career. John's. Mine. Oh, come on. It's not over yet. Oh, who are we kidding? Producing the first telethon that ended in a minus. Of course, it wouldn't be so painful if I hadn't had this dream ever since I was a kid. What dream? That someday, somehow, I'd be the executive producer of my own TV show. Silly, huh? It's the Alex Reed Show, starring Alex Reed with the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, and Alex's special guest, Robert Redford. Oh, I don't know. Everybody has a dream. To sing, to dance, to recite Shakespeare while juggling a ball on their nose. And we have the power to make their dreams come true. Howard, all I did was ask her to reschedule an appointment. A completely unnecessary one, I might add. When a patient phones every partner in the practice to complain, we take it seriously. Even Mrs. Nudge? Mrs. Nussbaum. Now, I've assured her that she will get to see you today. This will probably sound naive, but humor me. Why do we put up with this? The check's clear. Fine. Great. I'll see her right away. And peace will reign in the kingdom. Oh, by the way, uh, who's the kid? What kid? Mrs. Nussbaum says when you blew her off that you were taking care of, and I quote, some skinny Puerto Rican kid. Oh. Great, so she's a hypochondriac as well as a racist, huh? Let's save the politics for lunch. Answer my question? His name is Pedro Valdez. Actually, he's Mexican. He was a patient of mine at the clinic. And you're seeing him here now? Is that a problem? Mm. Who's paying for it? Look, his family is illegal. OK, they can't get insured. Now, I know I should have asked you, and I'm sorry that I didn't, but these are good, decent people, and they deserve our help. I admire your intentions. I, I do. But you can't use our facilities and our equipment to treat anybody off the street. Our insurance carriers would go ballistic if they knew. Well, why do we even have to tell them? And why does this boy's life have to come down to insurance? Because... Because that's the way it is. Now, I need your word on this. No more charity cases here. Clear? Oh, there she is. 
First Street, and it's a little restaurant called Nino's. It is so delicious. Exactly. Honey, you see what he's saying? Isn't that what I told you? Diversify? Take this to the lady in red. Excuse me, please. Cancer negative, diabetes negative, hypertension negative, mononucleosis negative. Why are you so negative? Mrs. Newsbaum, why isn't this good news? Because you're wrong. Here, look. There's been a new outbreak of tuberculosis. Hmm? Now, maybe I have that. You don't. What about sickle cell anemia? Is your husband still alive? He died four years ago. The nerve of him. Do you have any children? How should I know? I never see them. Why are you suddenly so interested in my personal life? Is it? Possible that maybe you're lonely and bored, and that's why you think maybe there is something wrong with you. Are you insinuating I'm healthy? What kind of a doctor are you? You are not sick. Keep looking. Oh, that's it. That's it. Come on, you're coming with me. What? What? Where are we going? For a second opinion. What? Mm -hmm. To be or not to be, that is the question. You know, Hamlet had a point when he asked to be or not to be. Have you ever wanted to be where I am right now, in front of the camera, to sing, to dance, maybe even to play Hamlet yourself? Well, here's your chance. When you pledge $50 or more, you can take command of the airwaves for three minutes and do whatever it is you've always wanted to do, within the limits of good taste, of course. So hurry, we only have a few hours left. Won't you make your pledge to be instead of not to be? Where are we? What God? What godforsaken place are you bringing me to? This is Miss Baum. I want you to see what sick looks like. What? I... Take me home. Take me home this Rosie, minute. Rosie, where are those x-rays? Okay, Wes. Bennett. <coughs> well, what's the deal? I was just passing through. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, don't pass so fast. I can use two more hands right now. What's going on? Thank you. Well, uh, I got a shark in room one and a jet in room two who were very busy trying to slice and dice each other. In room three, I've got an eight-year-old homeless kid who's got a fever we're trying to get down before she goes into convulsions. And in room four, a seven-year-old diabetic in insulin shock. Take your pick. Dr. Bennett, I am not staying here a second longer. I, I don't think you'll be wanting to wander around in this neighborhood in that coat. See you game? Yeah, I'll take him too. Don't. Don't you leave me here alone. You are not alone. And if you would open your eyes and look around, you would see that these are your fellow human beings. 
Vamos a ver. I thought I'd come and lie down for a while. Oh, poor baby. Where does it hurt? Right here. I find if you apply enough pressure, almost till it hurts, pain goes away. Much better. You sure? You have a magic touch. It's all I'm told. Listen, there's been a change in plans. We're leaving tonight. Tonight? Why so sudden? You know how it is in my business. Gotta be ready for anything. I haven't even packed. a toothbrush, remember? Right. Okay, well, let me change and I'll be right with you. There isn't time for that. What you're wearing is fine, darling, really. Shall we? to finally spread my stuff. Oh. Keep practicing. <laughs> Alex, look at the tote board. $8,900. We just might make our goal. It's not too late to make your dream and ours come true. So come on down. That's right, baby. Woo! Wait a second. I need to call Cat and let her know I'm leaving town. Call her from the plane. What about our guests? We can't just leave without saying goodbye. Martin will make our apologies. He'll explain that I whisked you away for a romantic weekend. Where do you two lovebirds think you're flying off to? Bucky. I didn't know you were joining us this evening. Me either. Sorry if I'm a little underdressed. Lose something, Martin? You really shouldn't leave your toys laying around the front yard. What do I want? I want to propose a toast to the happy couple. Come on, everyone, raise your glasses and gather round. And they thought that they could just sneak out without getting caught. Well, we can't have that, can we? As my Aunt Alice used to say, marriage should be based on mutual trust, respect, understanding, or at least great sex. <laughs> May you have all of the above. Here, here. Thank you, all of you. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have a plane to catch. Oh, no, no, you can't run off just yet. Your present hasn't arrived, but hey, don't worry. I called, and it'll be here any minute. Yep. There it is now. What is that? Police? Oh, important announcement, everybody. Listen up. Softball season is upon us. Our first game is next Saturday 
And it's against the Highland Park Rhinos. Now, if those sissy plastic surgeons beat us again this year, they're gonna rub our noses in it. <laughs> Dr. Bennett, uh, he had some kind of accident? No, I know. I just didn't have time to go home and change. Oh. Uh, where were you? At the clinic. Hmm. Moonlighting to make a few extra bucks? Actually, I was trying to remind myself what it feels like to be a doctor. Six figures a year? Access to the finest medical equipment imaginable isn't enough. Last night, I delivered a baby. The mother lives in a 67 Dodge Coronet. She drove herself to the clinic, got herself inside, and gave birth on the waiting room floor. And when I handed her her son, she started crying. She said it's all going to be uphill for him. I need to do something about that. Charlotte, that's very admirable. Uh, but you can't save the world single-handedly. I just know I can't save it working here. My office and my car. And my thanks for making me realize where I belong. Here it is. A warrant for Albright's arrest. I should have made you a copy as a souvenir. I don't want anything to remember him by. So we were right about the plans. Well, we had to dismantle the entire plane to find the stuff, but uh, it was all there. Harold. A rough estimate, 10 mil, maybe more. Enough to put Albright away for life. Not long enough, but it'll do. All right, come on, buddy. Let's go. I got a hand it to you, Teddy. That's a sight I never thought I'd see. Didn't you hear the ladies to die for? Teddy? Teddy? Wait a minute. Wait. I can't believe you do this to me. What's that, Daniel? you love me. The man who had my husband killed? That would take an unusually forgiving person. So you knew all along? Of course I knew. Why else would I go to bed with you? Same reason I went to bed with you. Can you honestly tell me there wasn't one moment of passion that was real? No, there wasn't. I don't believe that, Teddy. And neither do you. I loved Falcon, you son of a bitch. Not you. Never you. Get him out of here. for saving my life. Yeah, what are friends for, huh? And now for our grand total. $18,536.12. We not only met our goal, we nearly doubled it. Thanks to all of our supporters who gave so much of their time and talent. On behalf of WBEG, this is Alex Parker, wishing you another wonderful year of wonderful shows. And we're clear. Oh, man. Huh? Oh. Congratulations. You did it. Oh. Oh. How are you holding oh. up? Oh. I have newfound respect for Jerry Lewis. These pledgeathons are murder on your feet. Oh. But lifesavers for our career. The station loved your hosting and my producing so much they offered us our own show, Alex Reborn. Oh, and Alex. Hey, congratulations. That's great. That's great. 
Well, I don't know. It's always exciting when you first hear about it. Then reality sets in. You can't say this, you can't say that. It'll offend the viewers, it'll upset the boss. Who needs it? You do. We both do. Well? Those promises of youth are hard to keep, but even harder to break. So, who are we gonna get for our first show? Well, you could always use a uh, singer. How about a majorette? Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're a Muret? Hey, how's it feel being back? Like I never left. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. And I'm very happy. Yeah, and what about all those perks that you had to give up? You know, no more two-hour lunches, no more beer. No more Mrs. Nudge. Watch it there, watch it. You break it, you bought it. Be careful. Okay, easy, easy. Where they want this? Careful. This is Nussbaum. Well, don't look so surprised. It's not as if Eleanor Roosevelt walked in. It's a dialysis machine. Some people bring flowers. Did I mention I'm richer than God? No, but thank you. Thought as long as you're working here now, you should be able to take care of the people who really need it. I don't know how we can ever repay you. I do. There's room on the front for a plaque. My name could go there. Absolutely. Done. Mm -hmm. It's busy today, huh? Yeah, it's busy every day. All right, I can take a hint. I'll let you go back to work. <laughs> Oh, one more thing. Katie Couric was talking this morning about that flesh-eating bacteria thing. You don't and... have it. I figured. Thank you. I can't believe you didn't tell us. I am telling you. Well, she meant sooner. Well, I thought it was safer if you didn't know about him. <gasps> I damn sure didn't want him knowing about you. Yeah, that's why you didn't want me to meet him. And that's why you were buying all that takeout food. <sighs> Lucky must have gained 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Sis, what's wrong? <gasps> we're sitting here laughing, but the truth is you could have been killed. But I wasn't killed. I'm still here. And Alex is right. Mommy did take an awful chance. I know I did, honey, but I had to. Besides, it gave me a reason to get up every day. It kept me going when I wanted to just curl up in a ball and die. I lived for the day I'd see that guy handcuffed and driven off to jail. Well, it's all over now. Only it doesn't bring Falconer back. You would think of all the kids' lives you saved by getting that guy's drugs off the street. Yeah, no one's done more for someone they love. Falconer knows that. Falconer would be so proud of you, Mom. So are we. Thanks. Oh, boy, guys. I think I've had a very long day. I need some shut-eye. You sure you're gonna be okay? I'm sure, I'm sure. Oh. Good night. Yes, take this. Falconer, I gave you my word of honor. Now you can rest in peace.
Next on Sisters. For the life of me, I cannot remember who Aunt Gigi is. I have so many stories to tell you. Stories? Long stories? One more time. <laughs> For all of us. Push. Uh, yes. Mr. Ziegfeld says I'm going to be big, big, big. Don't leave us. We all love you so much. It's as if she's willing herself to die. I won't bore you any longer. Please, don't stop. 